Hello everyone, this is Andrew from Crown Academy of English. Today we are doing a vocabulary lesson about expressions related to friends and friendship. So in this lesson you will learn several expressions and idioms related to friends and friendship. So the first one is like two peas in a pod. So what does this mean? Well, the literal meaning, well, this is a pea, so it's a vegetable. I'm sure you all know this vegetable. And this is the pod. So we are saying something is like two peas in a pod. So the real meaning is, well, if two people are like two peas in a pod, then it means they are very similar. So it means that their appearance, so their physical appearance and pers personalities are very similar. So they look the same. And we often use this expression to describe twins. Okay, so brothers and sisters, identical twins. Example. Jane and Sarah are like two peas in a pot. Two peas in a pot. Because they look very similar, their appearance is very similar, and probably their personalities are very similar also. Okay? To be on the same wavelength. To be on the same wavelength. So what is wavelength? Well, it's a scientific thing. So for example, you have a radio wave. So this is representing a wave. Okay, this red line. And wavelength is the length of the wave. So we take um, part of the wave here, the crest of the wave, and we measure the distance to another crest of a wave. So this length is the wavelength. So that's the literal meaning. Um, and the real meaning is, well, if people are on the same wavelength, it means that they think in the same way. Okay. So they have similar ideas and opinions and they understand each other. So here is an example. John and Mark work well together because they are on the same wavelength. They are on the same wavelength. Okay, so they understand each other. They think in the same way. They have the same ideas and opinions. Okay, they are on the same wavelength. A shoulder to cry on. A shoulder to cry on is a person who listens to your problems and gives you support, sympathy and encouragement. Okay, so it is someone who is there for you when you feel sad and down. So David needs a shoulder to cry on. So David needs a shoulder to cry on. So this means David needs somebody uh, to listen to his problems. He needs someone to give him support, sympathy and encouragement. Okay. John is her shoulder to cry on when she is sad. So John is her shoulder to cry on when she is sad. Okay, so John is the person who gives her support and sympathy and encouragement when she is sad. This is a very good one. You hear this a lot. To stick up for someone. To stick up for someone. So this is a phrasal verb. Stick up for someone. And this means to defend and support someone in an argument or dispute. And 
The past simple form of stick is stuck. Okay, so it's an irregular verb. So if we use this in the past tense, we say stuck up for someone. Okay, so example. So this is um, a situation. Sarah says, you broke my phone. Jane says, no, I didn't. And Sarah replies, I don't believe you. And now Mark, so this is someone else now, Mark says, it's true. Jane didn't break your phone. Okay, so we say that Mark is sticking up for Jane. So this is the present tense. If we want to describe this in the present tense, we say Mark is sticking up for Jane. So this means that Mark is defending Jane. He's supporting Jane in this argument because Sarah and Jane are having an argument. Mark is defending Jane. He's taking Jane's side. Mark is sticking up for Jane. So how do we say this in the past? If we want to say this in the past tense, well, we say Mark stuck up for Jane. He stuck up for Jane because remember, stuck is the past form of the verb stick. So this means that Mark supported Jane. He, def he defended Jane. Okay. So this is very common. You hear this a lot. So here we have two expressions and they mean the same thing. Okay, these are the same expressions, but two versions. We say to get on well with someone or to get along well with someone. So why do we have two versions of the same expression? Well, this one, to get on well with someone, this is more common in British English. And this one, to get along well with someone, is more common in American English. Now, of course, there can be some mix here. There can be, you know, some British people will say this and some Americans will say this. But overall, in general, this is a British expression and this is an American expression. But the meaning is the same. The meaning is the same. And the meaning is to like someone and to be friendly with someone. Okay. So you talk to them and the conversation goes well. Okay. It's um, you like the other person and the other person likes you. You are friendly with the other person and the other person is also friendly with you. So you get on well with the person or you get along well with the person. Example. So Mark gets on well with his manager. Mark gets on well with his manager. So you can see that they are, that Mark likes his manager and he is friendly with him. And it also looks like it's um, reciprocal, that the manager also seems to like Mark and is friendly towards Mark. So we say in British English, Mark gets on well with his manager. And the American version is Mark gets along well with his manager. Okay, means the same thing. Sarah and Jane get on well with each other. Get on well with each other. Each other, this is a reciprocal pronoun. So this means Sarah gets on well with Jane and Jane gets on well with Sarah. It's in both directions. Each other. I have another video about this. Uh, I'll put a link at the end of this video. And the American version, of course, Sarah and Jane get along well with each other. Okay, so this is the American version. So 
they like each other and they are friendly with each other. To get on like a house on fire. So this is the same as the previous expression, to get on well with someone, but this is um, a very high level. This is when you really, really, really like someone and you're really friendly with them. So this is the, um, the literal meaning. So a house is on fire. But this is a positive expression. This is not a negative meaning. So the fire here, fire is obviously a bad thing. But this expression, it is a positive thing because you like someone and you're friendly towards them. So it means to get on very well with someone. This is the important word here, very well. To like someone a lot and to really enjoy their company. Okay, so for example, when you go to a party and you meet someone for the first time and you immediately like the person and the conversation is good, then you say um, you are getting on like a house on fire. So another example, Jane and Sarah get on like a house on fire. So they get on very well. They like each other a lot and they really enjoy each other's company. Okay? To get together. If two or more people get together, they meet each other socially. Example. Mark says, my friends and I are getting together for a meal. Would you like to join us? So Mark here, he is inviting us um, to meet with him and his friends so in a social environment. Okay, so we are getting together for a meal. Would you like to join us? So this is a nice way of giving someone an invitation. We are getting together for a meal, for a party, for a drink, um, for a coffee. Would you like to join us? And here is another example with a coffee. Jane says, let's get together for coffee tomorrow. And Sarah says, good idea, I'll call you. So here is another way of giving an invitation. Let's get together. So let's meet for coffee tomorrow. Okay. To hang out, I'm sure you, if you watch American television, then I'm sure you hear this a lot. So, as I said, this is an American expression, but I'm including it in this video because it is also becoming common in British English. So the, it's much more common in American English, but as I say, more and more British people particularly younger people, are using it. It's quite informal. This is quite informal. So it's more common with, um, with younger people. So it means simply to spend time to someone. Sorry, to spend time with someone. So to do something with someone. So it's quite vague. It's not you don't really use this to describe specific plans. Let me give you an example. So two young men are talking. And Mark asks, sorry, this should be, this should be a word you here. Do you have any plans for tomorrow? Yes, sorry, I made a mistake when I was writing this. There should be the subject you. Do you have any plans for tomorrow? David says, no. And Mark says, do you want to hang out? Do you want to hang out? So this means, do you want to spend time together? Do you want to do something together? Basically, do you want, you know, what should we do? So as I say, this is very common in American English, 
Personally, I don't really like the expression because it's very vague. Mark isn't really proposing a specific activity. He's just saying, do you want to do something tomorrow? So I think there are better ways of asking this. But anyway, I included it in this video because it is very, very common and it's important, I think, for you to understand it. Okay, so I'm sorry for this little mistake. This should, there should be the word you here. Do you have any plans for tomorrow? So I'm sorry about that. And David says, sure. <laughs> So that means, yes, I agree. Yes, I do want to hang out tomorrow. Okay. So that's the end of the lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. If you are preparing for the IELTS exam, then click here for more information about our IELTS online course. And here are some other videos which I recommend.